Greetings, friends. My name is Pavel Stelmach, and I'm glad to present for you the new episode of our daily wrap-up series. While Russia is trying to advance on the battlefield and seize as much territory as possible, the Russian economy is feeling worse every day. The main source of filling the budget, hydrocarbons, are falling in price. Moreover, Western countries have agreed on the highest price they are willing to pay for Russian oil. Therefore, even if the market price of fuel increases, it will not bring profit for the Russian economy. At the end of the year, a budget deficit of 3.35 trillion rubles, or about 2.3% of GDP, was recorded. Russia was forced to increase the issue of domestic borrowings. The National Welfare Fund, which has been used to cover the budget deficit since October, has decreased by tens of billions of dollars. At the same time, the trends are only getting worse, and this year the budget deficit is expected to reach at least 6%. In case the sanctions coalition takes a time, of a stance on the price cap on oil and petroleum products, the situation will be even worse. Yulia Svorydenko, first deputy prime minister of Ukraine. Most of the problems with the Russian economy are due to the imposed sanctions. And they attack Russia, attack the income of the Kremlin and its residents. Although they will not admit it to you, they will continue to tell that sanctions do not work. Import substitution in Russia does everything. But in reality, everything is different. In fact, in 2022, Russians are selling 50% more apartments, for which the mortgage has not yet been paid off. The business real estate market has fallen by 20%, and this is just the beginning. There are no reasons for something to improve in Russia. Of course, the Russians will try to reduce the sanctions pressure and will try to influence ordinary citizens, not politicians. Pro-Russian mass media are already reporting that the increased inflation, which is currently observed all over the world, is due to the imposed sanctions. But this is not so. The reason is the Russian aggression and attempts to blackmail countries. It was Russian aggression that blocked more than 20 million tons of grain in Ukrainian ports in the spring of 2022. And this was the reason for the increase in the cost of food throughout the world, in particular in the Middle East and Africa. Yes, Russian minister Lavrov can now go around and convince countries that it's all about the EU and the USA. But the reality is different. As soon as Ukrainian grain arrives at one of the ports, the price of food drops. So what is the reason for the increase in prices? Sanctions or food shortages due to war? And I'm glad that the EU is winning this battle of narratives with Russia and more and more countries understand that it was not sanctions that led to the economic upheaval. If they want to trade with Russia, what can I do? I cannot prevent them from doing that. There is a difference between wanting to spare Russia and to refuse to acknowledge that clear violation of international rules by the Russians in Ukraine. We don't ask them and we don't ask any African countries or any country in the world to choose sides. We are only asking them to stand on the side of the United Nations Charter. Joseph Borrell, the EU High Representative for Foreign Affairs. And besides the fact that the EU is defeating Russia in the battle of narratives, it is also winning the political battle. Currently, almost 90% of Ukrainians support joining the EU, and the European Union itself is not against Ukraine's joining. Back in June, they gave the status of a candidate for admission. And now Ukraine expects full accession in two years. At least such plans were announced by our Prime Minister Denis Shmihal. We have a very ambitious plan to join the European Union within the next two years. So we expect that this year, in 2023, we can already have this pre-entry stage of negotiations. Denis Shmihal, Prime Minister of Ukraine, in an interview with Politico. Another breakthrough in relations between Ukraine and the EU may take place this Friday during the Ukraine-EU summit. One of the goals of Friday's summit will be to assess the reality of expectations, but some progress is predicted in areas such as duty-free access for Ukrainian exports, mobile roaming and inclusion in the single euro payments area. Ukraine is getting ready to show the outcomes of the implementation of all seven recommendations of the European Commission. We hope to receive a favorable appraisal of our endeavors by the EU. 
Ukraine's membership in the EU would be in the bloc's best strategic interest. As an EU member state, Ukraine will significantly reinforce the security of Europe and its global standing. It will also be a fresh testament to the success of the European project. As an EU member state, Ukraine will enhance Europe's food security, contribute to the implementation of the European Green Deal, digital governance, fortify cybersecurity and resistance to hybrid threats, as well as in various other areas where Ukraine and EU can mutually benefit one another. Ukraine and the European Union share the same goal, the securing of long-lasting peace in Ukraine and across the European continent. Thus, in the face of Russian aggression, we must stand united as never before. France and Australia agreed to supply Ukraine with 155mm artillery shells. Poland is ready to transfer F-16 fighters to Ukraine in coordination with NATO. France confirmed the agreement with Italy on the purchase of 700 missiles for the SAMP-T air defense system, which has been prepared for Ukraine. Denmark has confirmed that it is ready to join the tank coalition for Ukraine. This is all the news of one day, Monday. Last week, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz announced the transfer of 14 Leopard 2A6 tanks to Ukraine, and US President Joseph Biden announced the delivery of 31 M1A2 Abrams tanks. Poland is ready to supply Ukraine with 60 more tanks of its own modernization, RT-91 Twarde. And you know, Ukraine is extremely grateful to its partners for their long awaited decision to supply modern tanks for the nation's defense. We expect that the dozen countries that have already formed the tank coalition will transfer the much-needed tanks as soon as possible. We really get Western-made tanks. These are original Western-made tanks. These are modernized Western-made tanks and tanks that are representatives of the latest generation of the corresponding military equipment. And if so, then this means that engineering thought worked, tests were carried out, the military potentials of countries were modernized. But in order to bring Russian aggression to an end, Ukraine needs not only ground victories, but air victories as well. Apart from needing additional air defense systems, Ukraine also requires combat aircraft such as fighter jets and bombers in order to counterbalance Russia's strategic advantage in aviation. If Russia's military machine is not defeated on the battlefield on Ukraine, it will soon become a formidable military threat to other its neighbors, including the entirety of Europe. This is why Ukraine's victory is so critical to European and global security. The weapons provided to Ukraine by its partners are being used appropriately and responsibly. The transfer and use of these weapons are under careful observation of the Western partners, as the Ukrainian command is determined to ensure maximum transparency and responsibility. Trust is what our relationship is built on. Transparency of all processes without exception is what we have achieved and continue to adhere to. The Ministry of Defense and the Armed Force make very close attention to the issue of the supply of weapons and their accounting. The delegation of U.S. inspectors positively noted the first results of the implementation of the LogFast logistic program by the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine, which allows monitoring the supply of weapons to Ukraine from partner countries and controlling the movement of materials material and technical assistance. Our partners made sure that all the weapons and equipment delivered from the USA in the appropriate quantity are effectively used by the Ukrainian defenders. And most importantly, our partners like us are sure that Ukraine will win, and they are with us at all stages of this fight against evil on a global scale. Oleksiy Reznikov, Minister of Defense of Ukraine, on Facebook. Let me remind you that more than 320 heavy tanks have already been promised to Ukraine. This is what the Supreme Commander-in-Chief of Ukraine, Valery Zaluzhny, asked for a successful border crossing operations on February 23rd. However, our soldiers still need from 600 to 700 BMPs and 500 howitzers. After that, the exit to the borders of 1991 will become even more likely. As for the Russian borders, we will not cross them. After such a defeat on Ukrainian territories, their country will disintegrate by itself. That concludes our today's video. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for future videos. Subscribe to UATV English and goodbye.